the FBI estimate that there are currently at least 250,000 cold cases in America alone. And this is one of them. Florida vacation. In the face of rising prices. <laughs> The 26-year-old was found beaten and strangled to death. Accounts Anna Kane's card was marked from the start. Although growing up she had promise, she didn't really have a chance. Sexually abused, low income family, father beat her, you know the score. Got involved in drugs, got herself banged up, left home. Two more kids followed, there are not too many options for a young woman who needs to put food on the table, so she had to start sucking cock. But doing that sort of thing don't have a much long term severance pay or retirement package. And every time that Anna left her three small kids alone and hit the streets, well, she was taking her life in her own hands. Thinking she was the hustler, she was the one being hustled. And I guess you could say, if you get on your knees and take the devil in your mouth, don't be shocked when he blows his load. It was just after 10 o'clock, she told her daughter that she was popping out to get some smokes and she'd be back in five minutes. That five minutes turned into five days. And she was later found in a ditch covered in maggots like garbage with five days with the rot. Naked below the waist, it was clear that the victim had been beaten beyond recognition. She had some electrical cord around her neck. But what puzzled cops was the night before there was torrential rains and the body was dry, meaning whoever killed her had taken care of business somewhere else and then dumped the body in the forest. And trying to find the killer from the common side of it weren't gonna work either because she had it in every hole that God gave her, and from different donors. Years worth of bus, from selling a pussy, being a public nuisance, petty theft. She was hardly an upstanding citizen, and the cops had more important things to do. So they filed it under who gives a fuck, and it went colder than a retard's tongue, licking ice cream off his mother's nipples. It was two years later, the cops got a letter from a concerned citizen but this concerned citizen seemed to know too much about the crime. And when I say too much, I mean they weren't concerned at all. It means they probably did it. But that weren't enough to put a budget to the case. And they filed away the letter. And Anna's case remained cold. When cops finally got it into the budget to look at some of the cold cases, they took Anna's case to do some DNA testing on the samples that they'd found on her clothing and on the envelope. And remarkably, all the samples matched and up came the name of Scott Grimm, an all-around loser who was familiar to local police. But tragically, Grimm passed away in 2018 at 58 years old. She was from the Reading area and recently moved to the Birdsboro area. Uh, autopsy showed that it was rolled as a homicide caused strangulation. So, as part of the investigation, uh, the victim's clothing was collected, later analyzed for DNA. Uh, we were able to determine that an unknown male DNA profile was on multiple items of the clothing. In 1990, the Reading Eagle had ran a front page story about the homicide, kind of asking for information, stuff like that. And then in February of 1990, the Reading Eagle received an anonymous letter signed from a concerned citizen um, that had numerous intimate details about the homicide. This led investigators to believe that whoever wrote the letter um, had committed the homicide. We later tested the envelope uh, that the letter was sent in where you would lick and seal the envelope. That was able to determine that a D the same DNA profile from the envelope 
had matched the victim's clothing, again, leading us to believe that whoever had mailed this letter uh, was, the, was the murderer. So Trooper John Bressler uh, was the original investigator. He's now deceased. Corporal Bill Moyer, Corporal Bill McClure, uh, Captain James Katita, and... I guess the ultimate tragedy in all of this was that the scumbag who took away Anna Jean Kane's life and left her three children without a mother was still able to live a full life and never face justice. But I guess at the end of the day, none of that's worth a hell of beans. Because life goes on. It has to. To everybody else, she was just this horrible person that did these terrible things. But they don't realize that, you know, she was someone else. You know, she was a mother, she was a daughter, a sister.